How about you, sir? For the, for this for this one, I think. Yeah, in, 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 order order to be in order to chip in and make some contribution, you need to be on the board and as the board chair. Yeah. It's you that I'm going to be directly dealing with you. Okay. Even the questions that I'm going to be on. Board. Okay, but I don't mind taking the board. Okay. Just in case I have to be. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Lamin I am in Ansubujan. Do hereby affirm that I will speak the truth. I will speak the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me Allah. Mr. Fansubuja, do hereby affirm that I will speak the truth. I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, we can proceed with the presentation starting with the activity of your Mr. Chairman, I want to inquire whether you have a a summary of the report that you want to present, or you want to take us through the uh, report that, that is submitted with us here? We, we don't have a summary. We want to take you through the report. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Honorable Chairman. Good morning, Honorable Members. Uh, good morning, representatives of the Auditor General and my colleagues here with me. Uh, thank you for having us. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be before this August body to share with you our TBT report and our financial statements for detail for your consideration and discussion. Uh, at the onset, if you will permit me, I have a couple of declarations I want to make. When my chairman said uh, he may not have any contributions, is because he's new. They were only inaugurated on the 30th of May this year. And uh, my humble self, I joined the institution uh, the second quarter of 2021, exactly April 14th, 2021. Uh, just in case it comes up, I think it's important just to mention that at the get go. <clears throat> Uh, I'll be presenting the activity report and uh, that will be followed by the presentation of our audited statements by the finance director and the external auditor will present the management letter and finance director will present our response. Our report is in five parts. Uh, we have human resources review air transport and commerce review, operational review, regulatory oversight review, 
finance review and an appendix of our audit and finance and statements for the year December 34, 2020. <coughs> Uh, I will start with the introduction of our report. The annual activity report for 2020 is a fulfillment of our obligation as per the Civil Aviation Act 2018, which mandates the Board of Directors to submit its line to its line ministry for onward submission to the National Assembly, a report on the authorities' activities at the end of each foregoing financial year. The report gives a synopsis of the authorities' activities, achievements, and challenges over the period under review. The report, as I mentioned earlier, is in five parts. The Human Resources Review Part 1 looks at the organizational structure of the authority. It underscores the authorities' activities in management and development of its human resources to ensure the effective realization of set targets. The Air Transport Review Part 2, which is our second part, provides an overview of air traffic activities during the year with emphasis on passenger, cargo, and aircraft movements. It also reports on routes and air links to the Gambia and reviews the bilateral air service agreements signed by the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority on behalf of the government and other states. Part 3. Operational review assesses the operational performance of the authority and also looks at the facilities at Banjul International Airport in our quest to achieving and maintaining internationally required operational standards geared towards total customer satisfaction. And in part four, our regulatory oversight review highlights key regulatory and oversight activities of the authority in exercise of its regulatory mandate. Part five, this section analyzes the financial performance of the authority during the period under review. And the appendix highlights the auditor financial statements for the year ending 31st December 2020. On corporate governance, the mandate of the authority in summary as per Section 19 of the Gambia Civil Aviation Act 2020, stipulates, yes. stipulates, among other things, that the authority shall oversee the safety and security of civil aviation in the Gambia, be responsible for IKO-related matters, and promote and ensure the airworthiness of aircraft, safe, secure, and efficient use of aircraft, regulation of aviation security, and regulation of air navigation in general. And our stakeholders include uh, the protection of consumers, people, and property on the ground. For oversight and supervisory bodies, we are under the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, which is now Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure. Uh, International Civil Aviation Organization and African Civil Aviation Commission. For regulation, we regulate the airlines, uh, Banjul International Airport, aircraft maintenance organizations, approved training organizations, air navigation services and service providers, passenger processing companies, ground handling operators, and holders of licenses. And these include engineers, cabin crew, uh, pilots, and the like. And our strategic partners are Airport Council International, airlines and cargo operators, the Gambia Tourism Board, Police, Immigration, Drug Law Enforcement Agency of the Gambia, uh, other security agencies like the Army and the uh, National Intelligence, and other regulatory, regulators nationally and internationally. Introduction, uh, the Civil Affairs Act 2018 empowers the minister responsible for civil aviation to appoint a board of directors. The board is the focal point of governance in the organization. As at 1st December 2020, the GCAA had a properly constituted board 
the Act clearly sets out the duties and responsibilities of the board. The board maintains the highest standards of Mr. integrity. Uh, my MD, I want to observe. Yes. Yeah. Um, since we have a copy of this with us, right. uh, going through this reading, everything is verbatim. It will take a lot of time. Sure. And this thing is going to be left with us for us to go through it. Okay. And probably consider that we will be able to uh, put ourselves on the board and put in the post selling question. So sure. if you can take us through and it's more than area, okay. and we forge ahead, rather than reading everything. Fantastic. That is Thank you. At your discretion. Okay, uh, in brief, therefore, the, uh, the board members uh, listed below. Uh, the outgoing chairman was Mr. Boyer, supported by uh, Mr. Claude Jensen and Rex King, and obviously our permanent members, the DG, and the representative of the Minister of Finance and Works, and a staff rep. And uh, the management team is headed by my humble self, supported by a Deputy Director General and eight directors who each head uh, their own departments. We have eight departments all together, Air Navigation Services, Air Transport and Commerce, Airport Operations, Engineering and Maintenance, Finance, Flight Safety Standards, Human Resources and Admin, and Internal Audit. Uh, the management, uh, our organogram obviously is headed by the Board of Directors. <coughs> And uh, the management is headed by myself and uh, supported by the deputy, like I mentioned, and the other line directors. We have the pictures of the management team on page six for your information. Uh, and on page seven, we have the statement from the uh, chairman. I don't know if you want me to read that or I'll let you guys read. Yeah, yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead and read that. Okay. Uh, esteemed stakeholders, I wish to present the activity report and financial statements for the finance year, year ended 31st December 2020 on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. In acquiescence with the Civil Aviation Act, the Board convened the prescribed number of meetings during the period in order to review and provide decisions on critical matters and also provide guidance on the way forward. It is worth noting that 2020 was a very difficult year for civil aviation in general and GCA in particular as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The resultant grounding of air transport at Banjul International Airport had significant adverse effects on the cash flow situation of the authority. An analysis of the authority's finances indicate that turnover fell by 57% in 2020 compared to the preceding year. This substantial drop in revenue has had ripple effects on the performance of the authority's function. However, the support of GCA's line ministry, in particular government as a whole, were crucial in this testing period. Recovery from COVID-19 had been painfully slow in the Gambia. Whilst projections point to a global increase in traffic, the estimated growth rates are small and estimates indicate that the country may reach pre-COVID passenger levels around 2024-2025 at the earliest. While GCA strives to navigate out of these difficult times, the board will continue to provide the leadership and support considering that aviation industry is critical enabler of our economic development in the Gambia. I am pleased to report that during the period under review, no material orders or factors were passed by government. The courts and regulators that pose threats to the operational capability on the going concern status of the authority. GCA continued to operate despite the challenges highlighted above. In 2020, government through the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure constituted a working group to review the proposed separation of the regulatory and service provision functions of the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. The group was assisted by a leading aviation consultant and the proposed decoupling was meant to give government policy and on institutional reform and recommendation in the National Development Plan 
the revised national transport policy of 2018-2027 and the outcomes of related studies conducted by partners such as the African Development Bank. Recommendations of the study were submitted to cabinet. In conclusion, I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate the appreciation of the board to the government for the support during these difficult times. To the management and staff of GCAA, I wish to say thank you for the cooperation and hard work during the period while we look forward to a relatively productive and successful 2021. We also wish to acknowledge the support and collaboration of our partners. As we move forward, we commit ourselves to creating a conducive environment, not only for enhanced productivity of employees, but also safe and secure operations at Banjul International Airport. Signed, Mr. Ibrahim Amboja, Chairman, Board of Directors. On page eight, we look at the Human Resources Review. Uh, as end of December 2020, our total uh, staff role was at 764, uh, compared to 760 in 2019. This shows an increase of only half a percent on the staff role. Uh, our gender balance uh, is uh, fairly attractive, may not look uh, very attractive to our our sisters, but uh, we have 576 men, male, and 188 female, which represents 75.4 percent and 24.6 percent. Uh, staff training was very limited during this period. Obviously, during COVID, most of the uh, training facilities were shut down, and the airport, obviously, for the most part, operated from home. I think we had less than 50% at work at any given time. And due to the strict controls, training was basically brought to a standstill. Uh, on air transport and commerce review, uh, the marketing and road development activities also were basically halted because this involved a lot of travels in collaboration with our stakeholders and partners, uh, going to various uh, road development forums and marketing activities. But because of the COVID restriction, uh, what we did was really very minimal also. Uh, on commercial and business development, uh, that was basically also brought to a standstill. In fact, uh, as you are aware or may have known, the air transport system universally was shut down for almost 14 months. So there were no activities at the airport. So commercially, we didn't do anything. Uh, on other air transport related matters, obviously uh, the operators were also grounded. Nevertheless, we had few activities that we had to do, um, i.e. Um, renewal of licenses and a few airworthiness certification activities that we did. But for the most part, uh, no limited activities were done for that period also. On the travel agencies, um, these are the lists we have. But we are also aware that uh, this is only 16, but we are aware that the total um, travel agencies in the, in the country first proceed these figures. Um, a lot of them attempt to operate illegally, but we've started uh, working to track them up down to bring them to book so that they come and regularize their status with us. On consumer protection, obviously, this unit is put together to ensure that customer um, rights and privileges are protected. But uh, during this period, since we have barely had any activities in the airport, they were also dormant. Um, we have a few uh, uh, graphs to depict or show um, the activities or the uh, complaints they had, and mostly um, uh, we have 43% related to flight cancellations. 38% flight delays and 19% denied boarding. On passenger figures for, for the period under review, uh, we had a total of 191,323 passengers. And uh, this was a substantial decrease of 60% uh, compared to our 2019 figures. <coughs> Regional traffic also uh, stood at 37,549 
which also saw a decrease of about 65% compared to 2019. European traffic also saw a decrease of 58% with a total of only 153,774 uh, passengers coming for the period under review. Uh, the rest uh, gives a more detail for your information on the, on the sketch. Uh, aircraft movements also uh, registered a decrease of 56% uh, with only 1,235 regional uh, movements and 777 European movements with uh, unscheduled movements of 360. Uh, freight and cargo also saw a decrease of about 37% with uh, only 539 tons uh, registered for the year uh, under review. Uh, on operational uh, review, uh, during this period also our safety management activities were quite limited. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we had a few interactions with our stakeholders like GTB, um, Red Cross, ITC, standard on new standard operation uh, procedures designed to safeguard uh, the safety of airport users. On uh, aviation security is an ongoing matter, obviously. Um, even though the airport was shut down for most of the part time, we were obliged to stay open because we had few um, uh, traffic in relation to um, COVID uh, mitigating uh, um, items that we are brought in by cargo flights. So in any case, whether we are doing zero or one passenger, as long as we are expecting activities uh, by law internationally, we are obliged to stay open. So security was still at full force during the period. Um, air traffic service was also open and operational 24 hours seven days a week, 365 days a year, as required by law. Aeronautical information services also was functional because you never know when your services will be needed. And uh, similarly, uh, aeronautical communication services also. Um, wildlife management is a nuisance that we always have to deal with. Uh, for, but uh, fortunately in 2020, or unfortunately, because of lack of activities um, uh, in terms of aircraft movements, uh, we didn't do much of this. Nevertheless, we are obliged to, to monitor the intrusion of wildlife, especially in secure areas. Uh, this was also ongoing during the pandemic. And this may be regards to dogs and other wildlife. We know that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, settlements now in the combos. Uh, the airport being one of the few areas with uh, little vegetation. We do have friends in monkeys and other wildlife, and we have to control them also because they can pose threat to the aircraft. Uh, yes. Search and rescue services from the fire services always is also on standby always. Um, obviously, for various reasons, our primary responsibility is to deal with uh, aviation, but never let rest when there are activities uh, within the domestic environment, our services is also sold. Like when there was industrial fire at the Carnifi, uh industrial estates, um, I think we were very instrumental in supporting the National Fire Brigade to fight that fire. In fact, we had to use a lot of our foam, which was designed to fight uh, aviation fire to help bring those and the fire down. Because I think the fire was caused by a gas explosion and it was very difficult to contain. Uh, with the traditional firefighting agents, which is water. Uh, so because of that uh, pending possible emergency and need for intervention, even without activities, we are still obliged to have a function in search and rescue services available 24 hours a day. Uh, equipment availability, uh, uh, the DBOR, these are mainly navigational aids, was available 88% uh, of the time and the distant measuring equipment, the MU was available 94% of the time, and uh, the NAV aids, 91% of the time, were available during the period, and the AFTN was also available 91% of the time, 
our voice into Dakar, 98% of the time was available. Uh, the voice link AIB was also available, 98% of the time. And uh, voice link, 65% of the time. Communication, 81% of the time. Uh, the airport improvement project, which uh, saw the remodeling and rehabilitation of the passenger terminal building, refurbishment of the air traffic control, ins installation of additional baggage conveyor system, installation of additional check-in counters, installation of X-ray and body scanning machines, lighting fixtures, installation of two complete lifts with fittings, and upgrading of the airport water system have been completed and commissioned. Uh, well, the commissioning happened this year, <laughs> but in 2020, it was in progress, almost nearing completion. I guess because of the day, sometimes you get carried away. It's completed, but uh, at the time of the report, it was not completed. It was nearing completion. Uh, regulatory and aviation oversight review. Uh, aircraft registration during the period was also are limited because the international air transport system, like I said, was uh, uh, shut down at the time. But nevertheless, we had uh, one particular airline, Sioux Airline, who was pursuing an airport certi uh, operator certificate with the intention of operating <coughs> in the Gambia. We also have uh, another operator, Badra Airlines, that had about uh, six aircrafts on our register and they continue to have that with uh, a list of uh, aircraft with our current quality <coughs> certificates. Uh, we have uh, about three maintenance organizations that are approved for use for maintenance of aircraft on our register. And this is the Badra Maintenance Center, Taco Aircraft Maintenance Company, and Jordan Aeronautical System Company. Uh, uh, corrective action plan. This is a uh, uh, correction of deficiencies that was identified during the audit we underwent by IKO in 2018. And this is an ongoing process. And for most part, we have closed all of the findings that was brought to our attention for correction. Uh, aviation security oversight. Uh, in view of the evolving threats, uh, we have a special unit uh, called the Quality Control Unit that does our security oversight to ensure that we are in compliance with Annex 19 of the IKO standards and recommended practices. Uh, for the most part, I think we are among the top 10 most compliant uh, states in Africa. Cooperation with partners and stakeholders this is ongoing, obviously, as we uh, need each other to make aviation safe and secure for everybody. Uh, so it's important, therefore, as an oversight agency, we maintain this open door and close uh, collaboration and relationship with our stakeholders and partners. It makes our oversight responsibilities very easy, and it creates that uh, harmonious relationship where we can uh, help them and support them also correct their deficiencies. Uh, the inspection, like I mentioned, is carried out mostly by our quality control inspectors, which uh, normally is followed by uh, um, their findings and requests for um, companies that have uh, deficiencies to submit a corrective action plan for implementation. Uh, on the audits, the authority received requests from two operators, namely two airlines and Tokyo Airlines, and one government entity, UK Department for Transport, to conduct audits aimed at assessing the level of implementation of security measures at the airport and to establish the compliance status. Obviously, uh, it was around this time that uh, uh, Tokyo's Airlines was uh, just starting their operations. Uh, the National Aviation Security Committee meeting. This is a requirement on our National Aviation Security Program. Uh, the committee is a national committee chaired by the Honorable Minister of Interior, and we are required by law to meet twice a year. 
and this did happen. During the period on the review for corrective action plans relating to findings of the IKO audits, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are pleased to report that almost all the major findings have been resolved and it's hopeful that in the follow-up audit, these findings will be closed. Uh, in brief, that's a summary of the activity report. So with your indulgence, Honorable Chair, I will ask the finance director to present the financial statements. Thank you. Preceding the financial statements. Page, page 27, part five. Part five. This doesn't have a page. Uh, sorry. Uh, the COVID 19 pandemic had a debilitating effect on the finances of the authority in 2020. In view of the strong correlation between the passenger numbers and revenue, GCA contended with serious cash flow issues during the period under review. The authority's operating performance decreased with turnover for the year ended 31st December 2020, decreasing by 57% to 248.8 million from 576.8 million in 2019 on the backdrop of significant flight cancellations due to the pandemic. Consequently, gross profit decreased by 66% to 163.2 million from 483.7 million during the same period, uh, 2019. In the same vein, key components of the expenditure budget also reduced during the period on the, as shown on the attached audited financial statements. The adverse effects of COVID-19 resulted in a not loss for the year of 241.1 million which is significantly higher than the figure of 38 million posted in 2019. In terms of revenue and income, the airport development fees accounted for a greater chunk of the authority's revenue in 2020 by registering 44% as shown in the figure below. So in short, uh, our performance was adversely impacted by the closure of the airport, uh, air transport system. Yeah. As a prelude to the presentation of the accounts. Page 37. The balance sheet as of this December 2020. The figures are in thousands of dollars. Assets, non current assets. Plant, property, plant, and equipment, $3,886,354 in 2020 as compared to $4,791,600 in 2019. Project development, GOTG, 2020, $92,639,000. The same duplicates in 2019, 92639000 That leads us to a total non current assets of $3,978,993 in 2020, as compared to $4,884,239 in 2019. Current assets. Inventory, $9,952,000 in 2020, as compared to 10,840,000 in 2019. Trade and other receivables, 100,484,000 in 2020 as compared to 
2019. Cars and cars equivalents, 47,131,000 in 2020 as compared to 52,343,000 in 2019. Corporation tax credit, 5,506,000 in 2020 as compared to 6,560,000 in 2019. That leads us to the total current assets of 163 million and 73,000 in 2020 as compared to 214 million 630, 660 in 2019. Total assets, 4 billion, 142 million and 66,000 in 2020 as compared to 5 billion and 98 million, 899,000 in 2019. Equity and liabilities, capital and reserves, share capital, 139 million 733,000 in 2020. Same for 2019, 139 million 733,000. The valuation gain, 1 billion 891 million 178,000 in 2020. The same as 1 billion 891 million 178,000 in 2019. Retain earnings. 2020 minus 1,939,037,000 in 2019, 2020 as compared to minus 1,697,589,000 in 2019. Total capital and reserves. 2020, 91,874,000 as compared to 333,322 in 2019. Non current liabilities. Regularization BIA Improvement Project. 2020, 1,535,229,000 in 2020 as compared to 2,328,781,000 in 2019. Loans. 2020, 1,020,963,000 in 2020 as compared to 1 billion and 11 million 539,000 in 2019. This leads us to a total non current asset, current liabilities of 2 billion 556 million 192,000 in 2020, as compared to 3 billion 340 million 320,000 in 2019. Current liabilities, bank overdraft, 2020, 88,562,000 million 562, in 2020 as compared to 89,690,000 in 2020. Loans, 499,833,000 in 2020 as compared to 494,528,000 in 2019. Trade and other payables. 2020, 157,596,000 in 2020 as compared to 151,858,000 in 2019. Accrued interest payables, 748 million and 9,000 in 2020 as compared to 689,181,000 in 2019. Total current liabilities. 1,494,000 in 2020 as compared to 1,425,257,000 in 2019. Total equity and liabilities. 4,142,066,000 in 2020 as compared to 5,098,899,000 in 2019. Page 38. Income statement for the year ended 31st December 2020. Revenue 248,814,000 in 2020 as compared to 576,786,000 in 2019. Direct cost minus 85,572,000 in 2020 as compared to 90, minus 93,074,000 in 2020. 19. That leads us to a gross profit of 163,242,000 in 2020 as compared to 483,707,000 in 2019. Administrative cost, 
minus 108,461,000 in 2020 as compared to minus 127,539,000 in 2019. Staff cost, minus 203,311,000 in 2020 as compared to minus 237,777,000 in 2019. Depreciation, minus 113,370,000 in 2020 as compared to minus 113,000,000 that leads us to a net operating expenses of minus 425,142,000 in 2020 as compared to minus 478,708,000 in 2019. This leads us to an operating loss or profit. For 2020, a loss of minus 261,900,000 as compared to a profit of 4,999,000 in 2019. Income and other interest and other income. 20,475,000 in 2020 as compared to 21,846,000 in 2019. Subvention from government. 85,943,000 in 2020 as compared to 49,286,000 in 2019. Interest expenses and similar charges. 2020 minus 82,924,000 in 2020 as compared to minus 62,487,000 in 2019. Provision for bad debts 2020 nil, 2019 minus 45,700,000. That leads to a profit or loss before tax. A loss of two minus 238,406,000 in 2020 as compared to minus 32 million and 56,000 in 2019. Taxation, 2,692,000 in 2020 as compared to 5,986,000 in 2019. That leads to us to a net loss for the year 2020 minus 241 million and 98,000 as compared to 38, minus 38 million and 42,000 in 2019. We move on to page 39. Statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31st December 2020. We have four, three columns, the valuation gain, share capital, retained earnings, and the total column. Balance as at 31st, as at 1st of January 2019, under the valuation gain is 1,891,178,000, share capital 139,733,000, retained earnings minus 1,659,547,000, giving us a total of 371,364,000. The loss for the year under retained earnings is minus 38,042,000 giving us a total of minus 38 million and 42,000. As of 31st December 2019, under the valuation gain, 1,891,178,000, on the share capital, 139,733,000, on the retained earnings, minus 1,659,000, and the total of 333,322,000. 3 as of 1st of January 2020, under the valuation gain, 1,891,178,000, on the share capital, 139,000,000, on the retained earnings, minus 1,659,000, giving us a total of 333,322,000. Loss for the year. Under the retained earnings. Madam, yeah. Madam Finance Director, yeah. we want you to pronounce the uh, currency in Dallasie because you are um, on the line. For us, we know it's in Dallasie. People outside there are not really aware of where you are. You are, you are covered by the social media. Yeah, the, yeah the, in the, at the beginning, I mentioned it's in thousands of Dallasies. Yeah, but yeah, it's in fact we know.
the loss for the year minus two hundred and forty one million and ninety nine thousand dollars under the total column minus two hundred and forty one million and ninety nine thousand dollars opening balance differences under the ten earnings minus six hundred and forty nine thousand dollars under the total minus six hundred and forty nine thousand dollars as of thirty first december twenty twenty under the valuation gain one billion eight hundred and ninety one million one hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars is share capital one hundred and thirty nine million seven hundred and thirty three thousand dollars is retained earnings minus one billion nine hundred and thirty nine million and thirty seven thousand dollars is under the total ninety one million eight hundred and seventy one thousand dollars on page forty Statement of cash flow for the year ended 31st December 2020. Operating activities, profit or loss before tax. 2020 minus 238 million 406 thousand dollars as compared to 32 million and 56 thousand dollars in 2019. Depreciation. $113,370,000 in 2020 as compared to $113,392,000 in 2019. Interest expenses, $73,832,000 in 2020 as compared to $90,371,000 in 2019. Foreign expense asking gains in brackets to lost on long-term loans. In 2020, $9,092,000 as compared to minus $27,884,000 in 2019. Interest received minus $20,475,000 in 2020 as compared to $49,000,000. $286,000 in 2019. Loss on disposal, 2020 is named, 2019, $2,708,000. Opening balance difference, 2020, $349,000 is minus in 2020, 2019. Changes in working capital. Decrease or in bracket increase in inventory. In 2020, $888,000 as compared to minus $594,000 in 2019. Decrease stock in brackets, increase in receivables. 2019, 2020, sorry, $44,433,000 as compared to minus $33,716,000 in 2019. Increase through in bracket decrease in payables. $64,566,000 in 2020 as compared to minus $37,130,000 in 2019. That leads to a cash flow from operating activities of $46,951,000 in 2020 as compared to minus $25,805,000 in 2019. Corporate income taxes paid minus one million six hundred thirty nine thousand dollars in twenty twenty, as compared to minus five million five nine hundred twenty two thousand dollars in twenty nineteen. Interest paid eighty two million nine hundred twenty four thousand dollars in twenty twenty, as compared to twenty eight million and one thousand dollars in twenty nineteen. Interest and other income. $20,475,000 in 2020 as compared to $49,286,000 in 2019. That leads us to net cash flow from operating activities. Minus $17,136,000 in 2020 as compared to $41,168,000 in 2019. Investing activities. Acquisition of property, plant, and equipment. Minus $1,637,000 in 2020 as compared to minus $624,728,000 in 2019. Project development, <coughs> UOTD, is nil for both years. 
that leads us to a cash flow from investing activities of minus one million six hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars in twenty twenty, as compared to minus six hundred twenty-four million seven hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars in twenty nineteen. Financing activities: loans received in bracket paid. 14 million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars in 2020, as compared to minus six million eight hundred ninety-three thousand dollars in 2019. Airport development regularization near for 2020, 2019, six hundred fourteen million five hundred seventy-four thousand dollars. That leads us to the net cash flow from financing activities of fourteen million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand in 2020. 14 million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars in 2020, as compared to 621 million million four hundred and sixty-four hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars in 2019. The net, the net increase in bracket decrease in cash and cash equivalent minus four million and eighty-four thousand dollars in 2020, as compared to thirty-seven million eight hundred forty-seven thousand dollars in 2019. Cars and cars equivalent as at 1st of January 2020, <coughs> minus $37,347,000 in 2020, as compared to minus $75,194,000 in 2019. Cars and cars equivalent as at 31st December 2020, minus $41,431,000 in 2020 as compared to minus $37,347,000 in 2019. The other pages are notes on uh, the problems we have been at the end. Thank you. Thank you so much. you will be coming here for consideration and that is where Gretchen will be drawn for the management to translate uh, for that report regarding. So this is only a presentation. Thank you. And we have the, uh, the, the, the management data with us, we'll go through the Gretchen will be drawn for consideration. So the auditor can go through without the management response. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman, Honorable Members of the Public Accounts Committee, uh, <coughs> the Office of the Auditor General, Chairman, Board of Directors, and Management of the Zambia Civil Aviation Authority. On behalf of Augustus Plum, Audit Tax Advisor, I hereby present to you Auditor's opinion. May I refer you to page uh, 33 of the activity report of the authority for the year ending 31st December 2020 and its rates. Honorable Chairman, Auditor's opinion. We have audited accompanying financial statements of the Gambia Civil Aviation in bracket GCAA which comprises of the balance sheet, income statement, statement of changes in equity, statement of cash flows, and no study financial statements, including summary of significant accounting policies applicable to the authority. Honorable Chairman, in our opinion, the financial statement gives a true and fair view of the financial position of the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority, in bracket DCAA, as of 31st December 2020 and of its financial performance and its cash flows for the year then ended and has been prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and in line with the requirements of the company's requirements of the Gambia Civil Aviation Act 2018. Honorable Chair, 
basis of opinion. Uh, we conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on audited in bracket ICs. Our responsibilities under these standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements section of our report. We are independent of authority in accordance with international stand, international ethics standard board for accountants, code of ethics for professional accountants in bracket IESPA code together with the ethical requirements that are relevant to our audit of financial statements in the government. And we have fulfilled our other responsibilities in accordance with these requirements and the IESB code. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide basis for our opinion. I hope there are other matters. Comparative figures indicated in the financial statement as of 31st December 2019 was audited by PKF, an audit firm registered in the government. Material uncertainty relating to going concern status. We bring your attention to note 23 of the financial statement, which detailed the liquidity situation of the authority in which the authority has incurred a net loss of. Uh, GMD, 38 million, 38 million and 42,000 dollars in 2019 to a loss of GMD, 241,000, 241 million, uh, 098 million in 2020. A 533.7% loss increase from 2019 to 2020. Furthermore, the current liabilities exceeded the current asset by 1.331 billion, implying that the current asset only covers 10% of the current liabilities of the authority. As stated in Note 23, these conditions indicate that a material, material financial uncertainty, uncertain, uncertain, uncertainty exists that may cause significant doubt on the authority's ability to continue as a going concern. Our opinion is not modified in respect of this matter. Um, I will share other information. The directors are responsible for the other information. The other information comprises general information, and the report of directors as required by the GCAA Act 2018. Other information does not include the financial statements. Our auditors report their own. Our opinion on the financial statements does not cover the other information, and we do not express an opinion of any other or any form of assurance conclusion their own. In connection with, with our audit of the financial statements, our responsibility is to read this, is to read the other information. And in doing so, consider whether the other information is materially inconsistent with the financial statements, or our knowledge obtained in the audit, or otherwise appears to be materially mistaken. If based on the work we have performed, we conclude that there is material misstatements of this other information, we are required to report the fact. Um, we have nothing to report on this regard. Honorable Responsibilities of directors for the financial statement. Can we go to the conclusion? I have read the audit opinion. Yes, let's go to the conclusion. Thank you very much. We this one. Yes, but uh, um, I will highlight the key paragraph. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very well. Uh, Honorable Chair, responsi uh, auditors' responsible responsibility for the audit of the financial statements. Our objective is to obtain reasonable, uh, reasonable as well as about whether the financial statement has a whole are free from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it's not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with IAC will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Um, the misstatements comprises the uh, you can continue with the sentence. I um, We move on to the last three paragraphs. 
report. Uh, Honorable Chair, we communicated with those chair, those chair with governance regarding, among other matters, the plan scope and timing of the financial statement, the timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we identified during our audit. We also provide those charge governance with a statement that we have complied with relevant ethical requirements regarding independence and to communicate with them all relationships and other matters that may reasonably be thought to be on our independence and where applicable related safeguards. Honorable Chair, the engagement partner on, on the audit resulting in this independence auditor's report is Mr. Augustus F. Brown, signed on the 16th March 2020. Honorable Chair, before I move on to the management report for 2020, uh, I have observed certain notes comprising uh, on uh, note 4. I, don't, I need clarification. Perhaps the report that I have, uh, uh, I haven't seen note 4 relating to the inventory. And I haven't seen note number three uh, relating to project development plan and uh, project development. Note five, trade and other receivables. I'm not sure whether the copy that I have uh, is not complete for all the reports. For that observation, I think uh, we've seen it. Uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chairman, I would like the uh, finance director to, to like to note uh, three development uh, project development, note four inventory, and note five trade and order receivables are not even captured here. The report is there. But uh, the copy that is uh, um, uh, that is supplied to us did not capture that. Yeah, we sent it over. I think it's the printer when they were binding. Because you know we we have the auditors report that is sent to them. Okay. And that includes all the notes. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll copy and send over. No, we send this to the printers. Okay, how about your copy? Does it entail uh, did no, no. no. Does it? The same copy I'm having, like. Okay. Uh, have you sent the soft copy? Except I communicate with our corporate guys, they are responsible. We requested both soft copy and the hard copy. We have to consult our corporate. Attach it to our report. Then we look at it. So during consideration, <coughs> we will critique it. So the auditor, you can thank you for that observation. You can follow ahead now to the management that. And uh, may I suggest, uh, in connection to the management letter, the high, the high risk ranking. Observations you can only have for us.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on page four of the management letter report for the year ended, first December uh, 2020. Point number one, revenue. Uh, the grading is grade number one. Observation. Uh, the following issues were noted during our audit of revenue aspect of the authority. A. Uh, air service lancing uh, slash uh, non serving airlines. According to uh, 5.2.11A of the Authorities Accounting Procedure Manual on arrival of a non scheduled airline. The commercial assistant on duty bills and the pilot pays the cars before departure. However, we noted from the following transaction that the payment were not done by such airlines before departure, and the table is detailed below. May I proceed to read with the table? Thank you very much. Uh, date, uh, uh, date, customer, reference, bank payment methods, amount, GMD. Just keep the table. I skip the table. Uh, point B Approval of air service license. During our review on approval of license for the period under review, we noted the following airline service lenses were approved and issued by the GCAA and not the Minister of Transport, Works and Infrastructure, which is not in line with Section 78 of the GCAA Act 2018. We have uh, considered the airlines. Uh, we have Air Senegal, Turkey's Titan Air Airways, Section 78 of the GCAA Act 2018, state that an air operator shall not engage in any commercial air transport unless EOC holds an air service license issued by the minister authorizing him or her to engage in such transportation. And I wish we have implications. Very well. A. Non scheduled airlines. Non scheduled airlines um, setting payments, settling payments after departure indicates non compliance with section 5.2.11a of the approving accounting procedure manual of the authority. Furthermore, it exposes the authority to a financial risk of potential bad debt or slow recovery of funds considering there is no argument between the authority and the airline. B, uh, approval of uh, air service license. The management of GC GCAA approving air service license without the ministry is not in compliance with section 78 of the GCAA Act 2018. Recommendation. A, Management should ensure that non settled airlines settle all bills before departure in line with the approving policy, policy of the authority concerning non settled airlines. B. Management should ensure that all air, all air service licenses are to be approved by the minister in order to maintain compliance to the GCAA Act 2018. On page number six, play the syllabus. 2.1 observation. The following was noted during our review on the trade receivables of the authority. A. <coughs> non moving receivables and follow up. We noted the following receivable balances for which there were no payments to the authority for over 12 months as listed below. So this is here with the customers, including the amount outstanding. The total amount outstanding equivalent to 20 million. $997,795. Furthermore, we requested for evidence or documentation of follow ups for the above uh, mentioned receivables, but none was provided for our review. 
B agent analysis. During our review of agent analysis provided, we noted the following negative balances, which implies payables. The table is below. The table below showing the name of the customers or airlines or customers, let me say. And we have 30 days, 120 days, 150 days, 180 days. The table is below. Upon this question, the explanation received was that there was a trade-off between the mentioned customers we turned into a liability at the end of the year. Furthermore, we noted such arrangement was not documented and there is no reconciliation statement provided to ascertain the closing year end balances as for the aging analysis. C. Outstanding confirmations. We sent direct receivable confirmation request to the following customers slash airlines, but there was no response received from the following. The details are stated below. Implications on the chair. Non-moving receivables. <coughs> receivables <coughs> non-moving for over 12 months with no evidence of follow-up by management brings into us question the validity and possibility of recoverability. Not following up on such amounts owed to the authority also enhances the risk of these receivables ending up as bad debts, hence not recoverable and leading to financial losses. Outstanding receivable confirmations. Confirmations for audit purposes not received before the conclusion of the audit engagement limit our audit scope on the receivables. In bracket income. Due to the authority has, we are not in a position to reconcile the figures uh, provided by the clients of the authority with that of the figures uh, recorded in the books of accounts of the authority. Agent analysis. <coughs> Management having a trade off arrangement and not documenting such an arrangement is not in line with good practice. In the absence of a documented agreement, we are unable to ascertain the agreed terms and conditions of such an arrangement. Lack of reconciliation could lead to overstatements or understatements of the closing balances, closing balance, exposing management to a risk of financial losses due to lack of reconciliation. Recommendations. A. We recommend that management should improve on the follow-ups and the outstanding on the outstandings, which will further improve the Cast situation of the authority. B. Management should follow up on this, met, on this mentioned airlines to ensure their receivable confirmation responses are sent promptly to the auditor for review. C. Management should ensure agreements are in place for trade off ar arrangements in line with good uh, practices. Page number 12, Cars and Cars Equivalents. <coughs> observation. The following audit observations were noted during our review on the Cars and Cars Equivalent, in bracket that is, Bank and Cars Management, aspect of the authority. A, Bank Overdrafts. During our review of Bank Overdrafts, we noted there is no facility letter for the make uh, for a particular bank overdraft which has a balance of GMD sixty eight million two hundred and twenty seven thousand two hundred and fourteen dollars. Um, as at thirty first December twenty twenty. In addition, honorable chair, the amount stated on the this particular uh, bank. Uh, Facility later is indicated GMD $13 million is financing facility. However, reviews on the banking records and confirmation for the period indicates that the authority had an over, 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 overdrawn balance of GMD $17 million, $136,789 as at year end 
with this particular bank. Uh, B, fixed deposit, investment appraisal. As of 31st December 2020, the authority had a fixed deposit investment of uh, DP, uh, DPP, uh, DP, uh, DPP British pounds, sorry, uh, of 100,000, equivalent to in bracket, uh, 6 million. Seven hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars. We requested evidence of an investment appraisal before effecting the investment with this particular bank, but this was not provided for our re for review. Honorable Chair, implication: A. Bank overdrafts. An overdraft facility letter not provided to support or to validate the balance of DMD sixty-eight point. Two two seven million, for which is financially material, means that there are, are no agreed terms such as the interest to be charged and the repayment period. As a result, we are able to ascertain the accuracy of the basis of the interest charge to the authority by the bank. Concerning this particular bank um, overdraft facility. Exceeding the stated overdraft financing limit and not having this agreed upon via documentation make it difficult to calculate or to determine the interest being charged to the authority by the bank as a result of exceed, exceed the, um, um, the stated limits. Management not able to recalculate and determine the accuracy of the interest being charged exposes the authority to a risk of financial losses in the event uh, the bank applied a higher non competitive interest rate. Uh, B. Fixed deposit investment. Uh, investment appraisals not conducted by management and then approved by the, board of, by the board before investing exposes the authority to a risk of unfavorable or non competitive financial returns on the fixed. Deposit investments. Honorable Chair, recommendations. Uh, A. Bank overdrafts. All banking overdraft facilities obtained by the authority should be supported with adequate documentation such as a banking facility letter or a financing agreement. So the clearly state the interest been charged, the interest been charged is supposed to be charged. It's a type of error and the associated terms and conditions. This will enable the authority to make proper reference when needed. To also apply in the event of a dispute with the bank and also to determine if the correct financing rate is being applied by the bank. B. Fixed deposit investment. Management should ensure that investment appraisals are conducted and recorded. Fixed deposit offers from various banks should be requested for management assessment, which will assist in ensuring that the rate or return being offered are favorable to the authority and also competitive. The process should also involve the board for review and approval of the sublisted investment offers to further enhance the assessment and transparency process. Page number 15, property, plan, and equipment. Observation. The following observations were noted during our review on the property, T is missing, property, plan, and equipment, in bracket, fixed assets of the authority. A, asset register. Upon our review of the fixed asset register, we noted the location of the assets are not stated in the register. B. Insurance coverage for airport com uh, complex. A building insurance policy to cover the fire and burglary for the airport was requested, but this was not provided for our review. Honorable Chair, implications. A. Asset register. Not recording the location of the asset, uh, the fixed asset in the register could lead to difficulties and inefficiencies during the asset verification process, for which uh, should be done periodically in order to identify and 
and check the conditions of the assets recorded in the register, mainly for control purposes. Insurance covered for airport com complex. Management now provided us with the building insurance coverage policy. But the airport complex means that we were unable to ascertain if the airport complex was insured against fire, burglary, and other unforeseen circumstances, taking into account the high capital cost implications to develop and upgrade the airport. Chair recommends A. Asset register. We recommend that management should ensure that the location, uh, in bracket, that is department, building number, office, room number, etc., of the assets are captured, recorded in the fixed asset register of the authority, for which will help to enhance the controls and monitoring of the authority's assets. B. Insurance coverage for airport complex. We recommend that management should ensure assets of the authority are adequately insured to further minimize the risk of financial losses in the event of unforeseen circumstances. Page number 17. Now which are the uh, going contract and liquidity status. During our, during our review on the assessment of the liquidity position of the authority as a PIP, we completed the current ratio in bracket, that is current asset divided by current liabilities of the authority. And we noted that the current liabilities exceeded the current assets uh, by uh, DMD 1.331 million in billion, implying that current assets only account for 10% of current liabilities, which implies a very poor liquidity situation of the authority as follows. As at 31st December 2020, amount in GM. Current assets 125,786,530. Current liabilities 1,457,000. 697,145 dollars. Hence, uh, current asset to current liability ratio stands at 0 0.09. <coughs> Furthermore, as of 31st December 2020, we noted a net loss of DMD 38.042 million in 2019 to a loss of GMD 241.098 million in 2020, which is a 538.7% 538 loss increase. 33. Thank you. 33, a 533.7% loss increase from 2019 to 2020. Honorable Chair, um, implications. The authority, the authority having current asset that only accounts for 10% of the current liability of, of the authority, that's a type of error, of the authority implies a very poor liquidity situation of the authority leading to the difficulties in meeting current obligations of the authority. Further impacting on the going concern aspect of the authority. The liquidity position is worsened by the authority's annual financial performance from a net loss of GMD 38.042 million, 38 million in 2019 to a loss from of GMD 241.09 Nine eight million in 2020. This negative financial performance trend could result to material negative impact on the operations of the authority. And in the event the Gambia government does not step in to provide financial support, there is a going concern risk. Honorable Chair, recommendations. We recommend that management should review the authority's liquidity situation to take steps to improve on its working capital 
such as negotiating with creditors to restructure on loans or selling non-essential assets in order to boost working capital and minimize the current when concern rates. Honorable Chair, um, page 24 to page 26 uh, comprises of uh, review on the implementation status uh, of the previous period of the finance. Seeking of permits has to be uh, to continue uh, presenting this table or oh, to leave this table with you to, to make your Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Very well. But uh, I don't know whether want, they want that are the ones that are not Point number eight. Corporate governance. Audit observations. <coughs> The Board's Audit Committee was constituted in 2018, but they have not yet met since it was formed. Here reported, 31st December 2019, current status not implemented. Auditor's remarks, this has been addressed by management. There is no this has not been addressed by management. Thank you. Um, internal audit. Uh, the internal audit department reports functionally and administratively to the director general of the authority. Internal audit administrative reporting generally focuses on the day-to-day -day and month-to-month -month activities of internal audit functions. Functional reporting focuses on the ultimate responsibility of the internal audit function. The ultimate responsibility is ensuring that corporate processes and associate controls are functioning as intended. Year reported. I'm seeing 31st March uh, 2019. Um, current status um, not implemented. Uh, auditor's remark. This has not been addressed by management. On page 25, staff appraisal. The authority does not undertake periodic staff evaluation and review on staff performance. We are reported 31st March 2018, uh, or the status not implemented. Auditors remark, this has not been addressed by management. Corporate tax. We noted quarterly income tax deductions. We are not being promptly remitted to Gambia Revenue Authority. We are reported 31st December 2018. Status not implemented. Auditors remark this has not been addressed by management. Page 26 Antivirus software. According to the ICT security policy. All GCAA computers must have GCAA standard supported antivirus software installed and scheduled to run at the regular intervals. In addition, the antivirus software and the virus pattern files must be kept up to date. Virus infected computers must be removed from the network unit until they are verified as virus free. And this will be free, not case. From our assessment, we observed that antivirus was not installed on some of the systems, and the rest have the AVG antivirus free protection, which was not up to date. We are reported that the first December 2017, status not implemented. Auditors remarked, uh, uh, this issue is yet to be addressed by management. And uh, asset verification. 
We are concerned about the authorities fail to conduct, to have this, we continue to fail you, to conduct a fixed asset verification exercise as the physical conditions and existence of some of the authorities' assets might not be known. We are reported 31st December 2017, status not implemented. Auditors remark, this issue is yet to be addressed by management. We noted there is no indicated server room since the server, the uh, dedicated server room since the server is kept in finance director and payroll offices respectively. There is no restriction to the servers since the above mentioned offices do not have a biometric fingerprint door lock system. Here reported. <coughs> 31st December 2015, status not implemented. Auditors remark this issue to be uh, this issue is yet to be addressed by management. That brings us to the end of the 2020 management finance statement presentation. Thank you, Thank you. my auditor. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. This has brought to us to the tail end of the presentation. Uh, before I move a motion for the adjournment, do you have anything to say? The management, uh, I was saying, Honorable Chair, uh, that the management will respond to some of these issues, observations, and recommendations that have been made by the auditors. In the management, as you can see, in the in the responses to the management, they have tried to address some of these issues, and they have been mentioned as a ticking room in the event that some of these issues have not been taken care of, and hopefully with the new administration and the new board. We certainly want to see that some of these things are taken care of. I'm sure that I'll pass on the last chairman of the board. I'll try to do my best to see that where we have been found one thing, we'll do our utmost to make sure that we address these things. Uh, Thank you so much. I, you are now, you will be coming here by um, on the 28th of July, on the Wednesday. 10 a.m. come for your consideration. So this is where uh, members will ask questions and the management response can be functional here. So I Honorable yes. Chair, yes. you will be appearing before the committee for consideration on the 28th of July. 28th. 28th of July. Yes. 10 a.m. come for the consideration and possible approval. So we throw it out depending on the responses that are coming from you. Um, I want to seize this opportunity to thank you and your senior management for coming to do the presentation of the 2020 financial statement activity uh, report and the management letter really appreciate uh, your time for coming to answer to the National Assembly of the Gambia. Remember, we are partners in development, two sides of the same coin, completely inseparable. Our role here conducting oversight on you is to enhance performance. Since the um, um, GCAA is an act of parliament, uh, premix on three major objectives which are very key. Uh, one, to provide service to the Gambia, and two, to do recruitment in terms of staffing, and also maximize profit and pay dividend to the government. And this has been a great concern, and we'll work together to see we uh, remove all the bottlenecks to make sure that we improve the status of the PE. 
on that note, I thank you for your uh, presence and attendance. Uh, honorable members, can someone move the motion? Can someone move the motion for us to adjourn till 2.30? I move the motion for us to adjourn till 2.30. Any second that? Second. There has been move and second that we adjourn the session till 2.30. Uh, finally, the meeting is officially closed. Thank you so much.